Hey, what's up everyone? In today's video, we're checking out Skillshare. I'm gonna show you some of the courses. We're gonna go through the layout, pricing, all that good stuff. So let's jump right into it. So this is Skillshare.com. This is a video-based platform and they specialize in courses in the creative sector. Animation, creative writing, film and video, fine art, all the way to web development. Now, as a web developer, of course, I'm naturally interested in this segment, so we're gonna be focusing a lot on those courses today. But before we get into it, let me just show you the landing page. So when I signed up, Skillshare asked me what my interests were, and basically I said web development. And so these are the courses they suggested for me. They don't know, you know how many years experience I have, what specific type of web development I'm into. They're just throwing some courses out here. So some of their suggestions include the JavaScript toolkit, Coding for Beginners, Shopify Essentials, Web Design Essentials. And going through these courses, just a precursory glance, one of the things I noticed is that the vast majority of them are for the utmost beginner. So very newbie friendly. You're not gonna really be finding those huge bootcamp type courses on here. This is probably one of the longest courses I've seen on here. Coding for Beginners 1, you can code, 11 hour course, but I'm comparing these to something like Udemy where it's not that rare to see 20, 30 hour courses. So this is more for people, I would say, who are just trying to sample web development and see what it's about on the most basic levels. Here's one that's eight hours, not bad. It's still eight hours of video material. That's kind of a lot in my book. Navigating this site for the first couple of minutes was pretty easy. I also wanted to explore some of this stuff. I was like, hmm, student project? Can we just like look at anyone's project? And you can. People from all different courses share their projects, whether it's an illustration course, there's some video game stuff I've seen on here with 3D rendering. And then they also have, in addition to these video courses, Chroma courses. Now these are an extra cost in addition to your membership. I paid $167.88 for that annual membership. In addition to that annual membership, you can enroll in these courses, but they're multiple hundreds of dollars. For example, Master Logo Design with Erin Draplin, or Draplin, sorry if I mispronounced your name, June 6th through July 1st, that is $749. Now these are smaller course, not smaller courses, but small groups, so you can have that more intimate learning experience. And again, this is in addition to Skillshare's video, normal video offerings. So that was interesting, but going to web development, and this is kind of where I kind of had to do a double take because everything was going good. I'm like, okay, complete React Basics 101, responsive web design, nothing too crazy, but the related skills are pretty limited. And if you're a newbie, you're not necessarily gonna know exactly what to look for. But what if I was interested in a PHP course? Or what if I didn't really know what I wanted to study? I just wanted to do some front end stuff. Those tags aren't on here. And to my knowledge, somebody correct me if I am missing it, but there doesn't seem to be a way to filter these courses. So if we hit see all, we have, let's see how many pages. Hello, see all. Okay, so can we, view all. <laughs> so this navigation, as you can see, is a little tricky for me. La all time popular. I can only sort by trending or popular, which I might argue is kind of the same thing ish. But if I scroll down, there's 180 pages worth of courses, not very many ways to filter them. I could do free courses. Let's see what's on there for free. So we have one free course, learn CSS grid by example at 33 minutes. So that was my first big snag as far as the production values of these courses. Now, Skillshare.com is similar to Udemy in that they have all these independent teachers, these independent contractors who create these courses. And just like Udemy, naturally, some courses are a little higher quality than others. Some courses have had more effort put into them than others. We have different lengths. A lot of these, again, they're not these huge crash courses, but let's just see how many we come up with that are greater than an hour. So 116 pages worth of courses that are over an hour. And if we just pop into this one, has 21,000 students hand code your first website, HTML and CSS basics. 
give you guys a look at the video player. If you've taken a video-based course before, this probably all looks fairly familiar. We have your video controls down here. You can control the playback speed. You can do a rewind, video quality, HD or SD, all that good stuff is here. Then down here, we have projects and resources, which what you see down here, of course, is all dependent on what your instructor decided to include for the curriculum. So again, some courses have better and more thoughtful resources than others. This one looks like it has a lot of cool stuff in it. There's also a discussion tab. And this is something you'll see for all these courses, uh, whether it's web development or not, you're gonna have these different tabs, transcripts. There's also reviews of these courses. And much like Udemy, it is kind of difficult to find, shall we say, more transparent reviews or some critiques. Now, it's one thing to be mean in a review and just leave a one star because you're having a bad day, but it's another if you have a legitimate concern or problem with a course or with some curriculum and you're leaving constructive feedback that's less than five stars. And unfortunately, I didn't see a lot of that. What I'm saying is these star reviews, as far as like looking out for things like, hey, section two has a glitch or my code wouldn't run in section three, we couldn't get those heads up messages. There's probably a team of people that screen the reviews. Again, I understand why that's in place because there are trolls and haters, but if something is a constructive critique, I think it needs to stay under the review tab. So all of that to say, it made it very difficult for me, even as an experienced developer, someone who has gone through a lot of these platforms and reviewed these platforms. Now, does that mean the platform's gonna suck for everyone? Absolutely not. Maybe you come to this landing page and right away, you're like, heck yeah, I wanna learn website development with Python and Flask. It's your lucky day because there's a four hour course for that right there. The other thing I wish I would have seen in the web development section of Skillshare is a star, a superstar instructor that really would have added some validity to like, hey, this is a huge platform, which it is Skillshare. I mean, I see their ads pretty much everywhere. Just something, just like a hook, you know? Let's go check out JavaScript courses. This is something I haven't checked out until now. So I hit the JavaScript tab and it's still showing me a flask, here we go, okay, here we go. Shopify, which, eh, not really JavaScript. Art and Code, React, C Sharp Basics. So this, yeah, so the sorting and the filtering needs a lot of work, like a lot of work. Coming from a platform as big as it is, this was pretty disappointing, but it's all not doom and gloom because there were some really cool things I saw outside of web development that I felt compelled by. Well, creative writing was one of them and they had a course here. This is a course by Roxanne Gay. She's a pretty well-known writer. She does a one hour course called creative writing, crafting personal essays with impact. So if you're just trying to get into these certain skills in certain creative areas, this might be a good platform for you. And I didn't even have to filter anything or check out, you know, how many pages of creative writing things are on here. This course right away popped out at me, the creative toolkit, six techniques to spark original ideas. So if I was totally new to creative writing, this is something that I would find useful. And I think this type of filtering up here works a lot better with something like creative writing compared to something like web development, where we do need a more robust search and filter function. All in all, Skillshare, I'm pretty hot and cold with. There were some things that motivated me, that got me excited for the platform, like the courses and the creative writing area. But then when I went to the web development section, I was pretty underwhelmed. I got frustrated pretty quickly. It was really hard to search, sort, and filter these courses. And I don't have time to go through 181 pages of courses. My other wish is that they would offer a monthly membership instead of just the annual, because for $167, I'm just not seeing the value there yet. What does everyone think? Is Skillshare worth it? Let me know in the comments below. As always, hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.